Manju with your host, Dr. Manju Shen. Hello and welcome to a special chai with Manju. Our guest today is one of the most beloved authors of our times. She's a master storyteller who has received numerous accolades for her work. Her books have also been adapted for several Bollywood movies. I'm so grateful that I get to interview her for the second time today. And very excitingly, she is going to be in our beautiful city of Boston in the upcoming week for Akshay Patra. Let's meet Chitra Banerjee Diva Karuni. Um, Chitra, welcome to Chai with Manju and wish you a very happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Manju. It's always a pleasure to be on your wonderful show and I wish you a happy Mother's Day back. Thank you so much. Now, this is my second interview with you. The last one was also around Mother's Day. So I'm very grateful for this. Now, when we talked last time, we talked about all your previous books, uh, including my most favorite Palace of Illusions leading to The Last Queen. And at that time, you were writing the new book, Independence which is uh, now out and is a huge seller. Now, really, you captured the memories of a nation in that book through the eyes of three sisters. It comes with a big responsibility, though. So tell me what it's like for you. What has it been like for you to release this book? Because this is very different. And how do you feel now that the book is so popular? <laughs> well, you know, I, I have been really excited that the book is now out in the U.S. as well as in India. I've been really yeah. so happy about all the positive reviews and the positive reader interactions. And because, you know, that's what a writer hopes for, that the book that you spend so much time on will touch other people's lives yes. and will make them think about the issues that you thought were important. And really, I did not know because... You know, independence is a touchy topic. It's, yes. It was a time of great emotional upheaval. Yes. It was wonderful on one end because independence was happening and we were finally free of the British yoke. On the other hand, partition was happening with huge bloodshed and huge division in the country. So it's really a, a very complicated moment, but so important for us to remember and people yeah. are forgetting because I was, when I was writing it, I was thinking about it, that most people, including most people who are going yeah. to be reading this book, they were all born into a time when India was already independent. And yeah. whether they were born in India or their readers reading yeah. from other cultures, India was already independent. So we don't yeah. even really have an experience of how it was. I feel very blessed yeah. because my mother and my grandfather who were both involved in the struggle told me a lot of stories and I kept them in my mind and you know I've used some of them uh, in this book but I don't want this important story to be forgotten yeah. I want it sure. to be remembered all over the world it's an amazing story very relevant today all over the world true, true. and I and now uh, you know I had the same feeling because uh my grandparents and my mom, both my mom and dad actually, um, you know, we are Sindhis, so they came from Pakistan. And when I was young, they would tell me these stories of, about, you know, how they came in that ship and all the time they were standing. And at that age, you really don't pay that much uh, attention because you are not understanding the impact of it all. But when I was reading your book, all of that came alive for me as well. So you really uh, preserved the memories of us as a country no thank you for saying that <laughs> and you know i was just that way and you know uh, i know it's natural but i feel ashamed sometimes because when my grandfather and my mother would tell me these stories yeah. i would be like yeah yeah i heard this yeah. already <laughs> i did not have the maturity to feel it but when yeah. i was writing it i felt it yeah. all over again true. True. and uh, what i liked so much was that you have uh, depicted and showcased the independent stories so beautifully through the journey of three women, which is Priya, Deepa, and Jamini. And uh, uh, let's talk about that a little bit, of course. You know, every time I read your books, 
And I'm sure a lot of women feel the same way. I try to find myself in one of your heroines because they always uh, overcome so many challenges. And this time it was easy to find myself as a physician in Priya's journey who wanted to be a doctor. And I know there are some personal stories that are associated um, with you, but your grandfather and your mom. So share that story with us as well. Yeah, well, like you said, Manju, you know, it's really important for me to have women in the center of my stories. And of course, when writing Independence, that was not difficult because so many women were involved in the freedom struggle. And that is something else that we have forgotten. The big part that women played, I mean, they marched, they went to jail, they carried messages from one place to another, Mm -hmm. and they were in many, many supportive roles as well. So you know, my my mother told me a lot of these stories about how she herself was involved with Gandhi, mm-hmm. how she marched, she only wore Khadi. And, you know, I, I've tried to put all of these things into the book because what I wanted to do in this novel, in Independence, was to show that a country isn't independent until its women become independent. Otherwise, how can you, how can you even call it that? independent and the different way in which women approach and become independent they approach the whole idea of freedom differently and they have to understand it differently and they have to be invited to become part of that whole freedom movement right and about the you know how Priya wants to go to medical college and how hard that was and you said that I think your mom wanted to be a doctor as well Uh, yes she did my grandfather yes so my grandfather was a doctor. Actually, Nabukumar, uh, the, the father of these three heroines, mm-hmm. is somewhat, um, I think, a reflection of my own grandfather, wow. modeled on my mm-hmm. own grandfather, because my own grandfather also was a doctor. And then when he grew older, he opened a free clinic in his village as well. Wow. So, you know, and my mother wanted to be a doctor, but she was told for good reason, that that was just not a good field for women. It was not possible for women to become a doctor in India at that time. They could become like uh, other kinds of doctors, but not like medical. They could go into Ayurveda, they could become the Thai culture, Mm -hmm. you know, giving, helping give Mm -hmm. birth, Mm -hmm. but they could become midwives, but they couldn't become doctors. So that was always a desire in the back of her mind, which she talked to me about once or twice. It was Mm -hmm. a painful desire. She didn't go much into it. But so I think the character of Priya, Priya is not like my mother, but that hope of Priya's to be independent in that way, independent to follow the profession we want. We take it so much for granted today. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, it's still not open for many women, depending on where you come from. Yes, and I actually, it made me appreciate my job as a physician a lot more as I was reading about Priya's journey. And I have to tell you that I read, um, every time I read your book, I walk away with a favorite quote. In every book, I have a favorite quote. And this time it was from Priya's life when she says that um, life is too short to be wasted on trivialities when you have a goal in life. (laughs) <laughs> you know you have thank you. beautiful quotes in your book <laughs> thank um, you thank you so yeah um, I think Priya is very I mean I love all my characters but Priya yeah. is very close to my heart yes and uh, Deepa of course is the beautiful one and uh, who falls in love uh, with a Muslim man who's uh, portrayed very beautifully I must say that Um, in the book and of course uh, you know those were the times when your friends became enemies now sometimes I wonder uh, 75 years over 2075 now uh, with India's independence do you think we have changed the mindset of people or um, is it still are we still stuck in time where it is difficult for a Hindu girl to marry a Muslim man or vice versa Well, you know, many things have changed and many things have not. And also, it's like a pendulum, right? The mood of the country swings from one side to the other. So I think that swing Mm -hmm. is always happening. I think it is difficult, especially, you know, a lot of times when we hear the stories of India, we are hearing the urban stories. And we are hearing the stories really of privileged people. 
right? Right. right. But right. what is happening in the small towns? What's happening in the villages? Mm -hmm. Those stories are very important. And I think there right. it is much harder uh, for yeah. women to cross those boundaries of religion, caste, you know, all those, right. all those. Right. Right. So right. we have to remember their stories as well. True, true. And of course, the third sister, Jamini, who is um, falls in love with Amit, who is in love with Priya. So you kind of have these forbidden desires and love in your quite a few books, in Sister of My Heart, then of course, Love of Draupadi for Karna. So where do you get your inspiration for love stories and these unique <laughs> for stories of forbidden love? I must ask you that. <laughs> well, I don't know where my story ideas come from. Because uh -huh. like when I started, when I started writing Independence, I pretty uh -huh. much only knew it was going to be about three sisters. I knew that their father would die early in a direct action day one year before in the right. huge riots that happened in, right. in, yeah. in Kolkata. They, they, mm -hmm. Direct action, they happened all over India, but Kolkata was the most violent. Absolutely. And so I knew that they would then have to stand on their own feet, to take care of their family. But I didn't know too much more. And after that, you know, I just pause and I allow the ideas to come up. Mm -hmm. And they really come up and I can't explain. It's not a logical process. It's kind of a magical process. <laughs> I like that. Come. Yeah, I have these ideas yeah. come. So, you know, at a point I knew that Amit loves Priya and Priya thinks of him as her best friend. And yeah. then I realized, okay, here is... Also, the dynamic of the three sisters, uh, uh -huh. Deepa, the oldest, is her mother's favorite because she's so beautiful. Priya, the youngest, is her father's favorite because she's so intelligent. And here is Jamini in the middle. And yeah. that is the fate of many middle children. And I can't Very tell you, exciting. after this book came out, how many people came to me, how many women <laughs> came to me and said, uh -huh. I'm the middle sister and I so relate <laughs> to Germany. I was ignored always, you know, the older one was the first one, the younger one was yeah. the baby, and I was kind of ignored. So I think it's just a family dynamic as well. Right, right. And they love for each other despite it all. And I, um, And it's interesting in your book, uh, in this book, it comes down so it comes on so often. If only, if only I hadn't suggested Kolkata. If only I had done that. If only I'd left for America. So that was very exciting. So that was my only problem. I had only one problem with this book. As much as I loved it, I couldn't put it down. <laughs> so if you see all these dark circles, it's all your fault. <laughs> well, you don't look like you have any dark circles, but I have to confess, I love it when people say this. And I was very pleased because people have said this of four of my books more than any others. Uh -huh. and the first one is Palace of Illusions. People keep saying, I yeah. couldn't put it down the first time. Right. And then I went back and read it and I read it more slowly. They say the same thing about Forest of Enchantments, which is the retelling right. of Sita's story. Sita. And that's a good one to remember today on Mother's right. Day, because she is, I think, in my research, she's the world's mm -hmm. first single mother in literature. So, you know, yes, true, bringing true. up her I, sons true. with so much grace and yes. courage, right? right? And then the third one was the last queen. People kept saying it's unputdownable, which I was delighted by. <laughs> and that is also the story of a very strong mother who yeah. really lives her whole life to try and preserve her son's heritage, the kingdom yeah. of Punjab during in the 1800s. Sure. And then sure. this one. So I'm always so, so thankful when people <laughs> say that yes. they couldn't put the book yeah. down. I have to say, sister, a sister of my heart was also one of my big favorites. That's what got me hooked on reading every book of yours. Oh, and thank uh, you. this one is so excited. And I feel every book of yours I used to feel should be made into a movie. But now when I watch so much on uh, OTT platforms and I see you have so many subplots, I feel like your books are so suited for the subplots because in the movie, some of the stories get lost because the movie can only be two hours. So right, right, right. Well, this one I want to see on Netflix or Prime soon. <laughs> From your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> uh, I will say that Last uh -huh. Queen and Palace of Illusions and 
uh, independence are all options. So please, please, to all our viewers, yes. send some good energy, please. Mind you, you also send some good energy. <laughs> Absolutely, and sure. I sure. also think that the OTT platform is the best because otherwise a lot of the little nuances yes. are lost, you know? Mm -hmm. it, so it's nice to have the space to amplify. And I have to tell you that, you know, for a Kolkata girl like me, the best gift that you give is to capture the life and spirit of my favorite city because you have captured Bengal and Kolkata so beautifully. You know, when you talk about Grand Hotel, the Metro Cinema, Victoria, you know, Victoria Monument, you know, my favorite haunts with my husband at that time when we were dating. And oh. then the food, <laughs> the kitchen, and then of course the Kanta saris that, you know, Bina is making the mother and the quilts. It's just so beautiful to see Kolkata and Bengal through your eyes. So tell me what it was like and what was your favorite memory of growing up in Bengal? Well, you know, Kolkata uh, just <laughs> holds such a dear place in my heart yes, because I grew yes. up in that city many years. My mm -hmm. father had a transfer job, so we did mm -hmm. move around. Mine too. But mm -hmm. I did my... I finished my high school and went through college. I was in presidency college. Pres so. Me too. <laughs> Before my medical college. <laughs> right, right. So you know how amazing College Street is with all those old bookstores. I think every little bit of money I had, I spent them all uh, in those little bookstores where you could get great bargains. And yes, you yes. and I were talking about Coffee House, which yes. any any <laughs> friends who are listening in who are from Kolkata will know about the iconic yes. Coffee House. And yes. then it was just, and then in the Independence, New Market has a big role to play because that is where the, first of all, the girls want to go there to see New Market. They've never seen New Market. And mm. then the Kathas that Bina is stitching they will be sold and that will become an income for the right. family and that is also historically accurate because katha making became for yes. bengali women a way to towards financial independence right. but i myself when i was growing up i used to love to go to new market with my mother yes, just to wander too. around now yeah. i came from a very uh, middle class uh, family not rich at all so mostly mm -hmm. we did window shopping but it was still it was a fun. great experience <laughs> so all those yeah. things are part of my Kolkata experience which I've tried to bring into the book also you know I talked to my mother a lot now she has passed away but she would uh -huh. tell me the stories of old Kolkata so yeah. I did the research but I remembered my mother's stories and I remembered yeah. her places when places like Grand Hotel Indians could not go in. Yes, there. yes, right. And uh, you know, one of the girls asks the question, "Why this is our country? Why can't we go yeah. into a hotel that is built in our country on our soil?" And that is a good question. It right. reminds us how things were during colonial times. Yes, yes. I mean, I loved it, and I, my husband, has started reading the book, and I told him because we used to go to Newmarket, and then the. Metro movie theater was right there. <laughs> so thank yes, you. Yes. You brought it alive for so many of us. So yes. now you write such beautiful fiction, of course, intertwined with the facts of those days. Now, I heard that your next book is going to be a nonfiction. So tell this us about just, that. <laughs> this is true. It's a foray for me into a whole different area and I have been learning a lot as I uh -huh. write this book and uh, you know I'm contractually obligated not to tell you who the book is about but I think it will be a very inspiring book because it's about two people who came out of very ordinary circumstances and achieved amazing things for India so I think uh, of their lives as inspiring to me and I'm hoping they will be inspiring to a lot of course. other people that Thank you know you. this is a couple and how they negotiated their marriage as well as their professional lives coming from a very humble background I think it's quite an amazing story so I'm looking forward to that it, it's, it's going to be Sarojini Naidu or someone <laughs> 
<laughs> you can guess, yeah. but I can't tell. <laughs> I saw so much of her in this book and I wanted to know more. So, but we should yeah. have another interview when that book comes out. Absolutely. <laughs> Always happy to talk yeah. to you. But I'm glad you brought up Sarojini Naidu because uh -huh. the other thing I wanted to do in this novel, Independence, is to remind us how women played a big part in our yes. independence yes. movement. Hello, now when you hear about right. independence, and there were wonderful men not mm -hmm. taking anything away from right. people like Gandhi mm -hmm. and Nehru and right. Subhash Chandra and all right. many people who did different things, Vallabhai Patel, mm -hmm. wonderful. But hello, they were amazing yes. women. And on True. Mother's Day, let us remember True. that True. Sarojini Naidu marched side by side with Gandhi, right. went to jail just like right. him. You know, her True. health was ruined because of uh, the uh, jail treatment that she received. So yeah. let's just remember and appreciate the women, I, the, our I, mothers of independence. I totally, totally agree. Now, I have to tell you, we are so delighted in Boston that you're finally going to come here. I know I've been trying to bring you here for like almost eight, ten years. <laughs> and now it's just the countdown has started and you're coming for, of course, one of my favorite organizations as well, Akshay Patra. And uh, Akshay Patra USA, this is where it started in Boston with Desh and Jayashree. And we have a great team and we have over... 550 people coming for this sold out event who all want to meet you <laughs> so <laughs> super super excited because this is an organization i've been i've been a part of from the beginning so i can't tell you how much i'm waiting to hear you at the event so do you have any message for bostonians with now six days to wait <laughs> yes i want to say first of all i'm so honored to be invited to be the keynote speaker for this amazing gala, which raises money for an amazing cause, you know, feeding school children. What can be more central, more important to the growth of a nation? If we don't feed school children, we're cutting things off right at the root. So I so believe in what Akshay Patra does. I've been associated with them for a long time. I know Desh and Jayashree yes. myself, and I'm really looking yes. forward to seeing them They're again. The best. And uh, yes, yes, yes. So, so generous, so generous. And everyone, mm -hmm. all of you who are listening, who are supporters of Akshay Patra, big thanks to you for really helping to transform the lives of so many children and therefore ultimately so many adults and therefore ultimately what happens in Sorry. India. We are, we are all one, a small part of making things better. And in this time in this world that we live in so many things are complicated and they have negative sides to them and you know everything has become very gray but this i think is one thing that is positive from beginning to end you know because if children are not fed how can they study and if they can't study what's their future right so i'm very very happy and I'm, I'm delighted that it's sold out. I'm sure that is <laughs> yes. because of Akshay Patra, not because of yeah. me, but I'm happy to be a part yeah. of it. Thank you. And I'll so see much everyone time. there. And yes. I did want to tell people that although it's sold out, people can still contribute. So if you didn't get, yes. you know, you wanted yes. to come, but you didn't get a seat or you, you yeah. want to, you don't want to come to the gala, but you want to contribute to the cause, please go to the Akshay Patra yes. website. Everything is over there. And we're going to try to see if we can do some of it live because so many people want to come, but we don't have room. So hopefully the team is listening. So, <laughs> so thank you so much. And we will see you very soon. Thank you so much. And you have a wonderful week. All right. Thank you, Manchi. Always lovely thank to you. hear.